Welcome to the Catamount Football Show with Coach Kit Carpenter. I'm Bill Mayo, and this week we'll take a look back at the Ridgeland game and also talk about the upcoming contest with the North Forsyth Raiders. So stay right here, back with more Catamount Football after these messages. Direct Packaging is your complete one-stop packaging supplier of choice. In addition to being the largest in-stock packaging and adhesive supplier in North Georgia, Direct Packaging also manufactures boxes while adhering to the same service standards our customers have come to expect. With over 170,000 square feet of packaging and specialty films, boxes, and adhesives, we are the leader for packaging supplies. Direct Packaging is committed to our customers. We have a dedicated fleet ready to serve you. We pride ourselves in being able to deliver upon receipt in a 60-mile radius within a four-hour window. Our friendly staff is very knowledgeable and willing to help in any way that we can. With years of experience in the packaging industry, we can find the right product that suits your packaging needs. Direct Packaging also believes in supporting our community. We proudly serve by giving back to local organizations that make the Dalton area such a great place to live. Proud of the work we do, dedicated to the customers we serve. Direct Packaging, your largest single source packaging distributor manufacturer in North Georgia. Contact us today. sales after our service. This is Raymond. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, sure can. Uh, we can meet you in about 15 minutes. Does that work? Hey, Heath, you got to go to work. I'm go. Good hit, Aiden. Good hit. Papa, why are you and Dad always running off to work like that? Well, at Kaler Industrial, we always tell our customers we don't expect their business. We earn their business. Back to the Catamount Football Show and uh, Coach Carpenter, first career win as a head coach. And I know you'd like to have it last week at Calhoun, but it sure was pretty special to get it at Harmon Field and a shutout to boot, right? It is. It was special, but really more than anything is so many kids got to play and they did really, really well. You know, all those kids have earned the opportunity to play and they came out and demonstrated that, you know what, it, it, is, it is what it's all about. I believe everybody on the roster got in the game. They did, and they, and they, had, to, they had to, you know, a goal line stand. They had it was a big fourth and eight that had to be converted, and so it wasn't like mop-up duty. They had to get out and play, and so uh, when we say team win, it was really a team victory. So I want to ask your opinion on something. One of my pet peeves is the whole running clock thing because I, I, would, I would rather see them turn the, freeze the score and let the kids play, right? Let the, if you're going to play the young kids, let them play. Uh, yeah, I, I can see it both ways, yeah. but very rarely do we get out that early. <laughs> I know, I know. It's, and so – It was over at 930. It, it was over. But, you know, if you had coaches that would, would not take advantage of that, right. I would totally agree. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately, it is what it yeah. is. So probably one of the most bizarre stat lines, at least offensively, that I've seen – Score seven touchdowns, 49 points in the first half, and had 140 yards of total offense, not, yes. not rushing or passing, of total offense. Oh, yes. Now, well, you know, we had seven turnovers. And uh, when you get that many turnovers, uh, it's the short, short field. It's everything that we preached. And, you know, we're going to run out of stars this week. That's right. I think the, the worst field position the offense had was the plus 40. Everything, I mean, we were, you know – Two-yard line, 10-yard line, 15-yard line. It is, and I was concerned kind of coming in that, you know, we may lose our focus. It's hard to get up two weeks in a row. Uh, but I felt like we came out, kind of started just a hair bit slow, but we turned it on and really kind of finished that thing Special well. teams was good again, right? Absolutely, and J.J. does a tremendous job. Uh, you know, I would have liked to kick a long field goal, but, we, you know, we gave it a shot, but, you know, it was just a hair bit out of his range. And it'll be a moon pie Monday for the it will. for everybody, right? Will, everybody yeah. gets a – Shut out, everybody gets a moon pie. They do. They do. It'll be delicious. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and touch on real quick, senior night. Uh, that was your first experience doing that. Uh, and, we, and we started years ago doing it early in the season. Talk about that a little bit. It does. You know, we get the opportunity to go out and um, to, to introduce the, the seniors and their parents. You know, they put in so much work over the summer. 
and, and we really want to kind of get in and address it, you know, while, while, everybody, while everybody's upbeat and everything's good. And so it's just a great time to do it. Got to, you got to see all the parents and, and the kids lined up together. It's always kind of fun, right? It is. It is a lot of fun. And, you know, you get to see a lot of parents you've never met before. And I was like, well, it makes perfect <laughs> sense. It's a, and how about, talk a little bit about the crowd. I, I think that, that was a, a good atmosphere, or a great atmosphere, really, uh, for, our, for our first home game. It is, and there was a lot of uh, people out for the, for the walkthrough there at the beginning. Uh, and any time that the, the student section is involved and, and the fans are involved, it's really exciting for the kids. And, and really, that's what high school football is all about. Absolutely. I, I, th I don't think people understand how much their, the, the fans' uh, voice and, and their enthusiasm has an impact on the sideline. It does. You know, even when we had certain, some certain kids winning the game, you know, the student section really got excited. And you know what? They deserve that. And, and it really gets the juices flowing. Absolutely. All right. We'll stay right here. We'll be back in just a minute with more Catamount football. If you are selling or buying real estate, we are here to help. Colwell Banker Kennard Realty has been guiding the Dalton community home since 1974. Please contact the number one real estate company in Northwest Georgia for all your real estate needs. Home is a place where all are welcome. It's where the story begins. It's not a place, it's a feeling. Home is where the heart is. At Furniture of Dalton, we handpick each of our 150 brands so that you can find your perfect heart's desire. Come see what you've been missing at Carpets of Dalton and Furniture of Dalton, the destination that brings you home. Exit 328 off I-75. Board of Dalton would like to recognize our past and present Dalton Public School teachers. 2018, Ms. Risley Lee Dean. 2019, Mr. Freddie Fuentes. 2020, Ms. Ris Teresa Hensley. And 2021 winner, Ms. Ris Jennifer Sumner. Board of Dalton, your hometown Ford dealership. Go, Catamounts! At Beautiful Smiles by Design, we are proud of our small town heritage. Located in Dalton and Calhoun, Georgia, we serve our community with pride. We have extended hours, including early and late appointments, Plus, we are open Saturdays for your convenience. To see more of our amazing transformations, please visit us on www.beautifulsmilesdentistry.com or visit our Instagram page. For all your family and cosmetic dental needs, come to Beautiful Smiles by Design. Welcome back to the Catamount Football Show, and we've got our coaches interview segment this week with Coach Jim Bennett. Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Bill. So how many times do you think you've been on here now? Way too many. <laughs> I know this is one of your favorite duties as it a coach is. to come on. It is. Just I, I, I told somebody the other day, you know, don't wear a tie very often, and I've almost forgotten how to tie one. <laughs> so uh, it, it, was a, it, was a, it was a chore getting ready. So let's talk about your role in the team this year. It's changed a little bit, right? You, you've picked up coordinator duties again? Uh, I, I prefer to refer myself as, as defensive consultant. Defensive consultant, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, we we're, we're still work the same way. We break yeah. film down the same way. Um, you know, Kit's done a great job. He's still heavily involved. Um, and uh, so, you know, um, my role has changed a little bit, but, but not that much. You know, we're still uh, – uh, we have a great group of guys working on defense. We work well together. And, uh, you know, everybody just kind of fills in and, and – takes care of business. So you've been a part of the Dalton defensive staff for a long time. So what, what are some of the, you think, are the biggest changes you've seen in defensive football, defensive philosophy in high school football? I think the biggest thing now is uh, the way people are breaking films down. Uh, the film exchange is a big deal now. We mm -hmm. were laughing about it. Uh, you know, you had to meet somebody at McDonald's or pick them up at the bus station, and now you do everything on the computer. Uh, and you've got it on Friday night. So uh, I think that's the big thing, uh, just the access everybody has to information on the other teams. How about the changes in, in you know, used to we would see all four-man front defenses, and uh, now it, it seems like everything's either gone to – for a while it was, everything was 3-3, three, three, yeah. and now 3-4 seems to be coming back. What do you think has kind of spurred some of that on? 
I think the, the, the biggest thing that's caused a change in defense is because the offenses have evolved. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when I first started coaching, you never saw four wideouts in a game. And uh, a lot of times you only saw one wide out. Sometimes you didn't see any. Uh, so I think defense has had to evolve uh, with the same way. Um, you know, everybody's trying to get their, their skill guys the ball in, in open space. Right. And uh, so defense has had to evolve to, to keep pace with that. So um, I think one, one thing I've heard you guys say before and, and other teams is, is lack of big people, right? Lack of linemen, too has forced some of these going from a four-man front to a three-man front. That, that's a big thing, and I, I heard uh, several college coaches talk on this subject, is, uh, you know, it's difficult to find and recruit defensive linemen. And so a lot of folks, because of that, uh, have gone to a three-man front. If you got a, a four-man front, then that, that means you really need eight guys that can play. Well, if you play a six-man front or a three-man front, you only need six. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, it, it's, it's gotten harder to find big guys that can play. So I'm gonna change gears on here. I know you've you've kind of seated over the weight, the uh, excuse me, the equipment room to Coach Martinez, but you're in there. You're still a, an equipment room consultant. So talk just a little bit about how our guys are outfitted and and what you guys go through the process of getting the right equipment for them, and and just kind of update the the what it costs to outfit a guy from head to toe. We figured out the other day that it cost right out a thousand dollars to 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 outfit a kid completely. And when you first started, what was it, twenty seven dollars uh, or maybe a hundred? Maybe I mean, yeah. seriously, I mean, it wasn't yeah. that much, right? Uh, I, and I didn't start when you could fold your helmet up and put it in your back <laughs> pocket. Uh, I know a lot of people think I did, but uh, we actually had plastic helmets when I played uh, when I started. But uh, um, just the evolution of the helmet is the big thing. Um, you know, with all the information out there, uh, it still comes down to how the hel helmet fits. Mm -hmm. Um, I know Riddell, that's the helmet that everybody sees on television uh, because of the distinctive look. But Shutt has a product that's, that's just as good. Uh, but it's how it, how it fits the player. And everybody's head's not shaped the same. Uh, and if, if there was one helmet that was better than every other helmet, all the guys in the NFL would be wearing them. But uh, there's not one helmet that's any better. It's just how it fits your head. And I think one thing, important point for parents and and loved ones to know of our players is our guys have the best, yes. safest stuff that's out there, right? Our equipment, uh, you know, we have a lot of college coaches that will come through and they look at what our kids are wearing. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we're on the same level yeah. uh, as far as shoulder pads and helmets. Um, you know, this is Coach Chapel's philosophy used to be, I'm, I'm not really concerned about how good the uniform looks. I'm concerned about the pads that the guys are wearing. So we've always emphasized equipment. Uh, we, we recondition our helmets every year, uh, and that's not a requirement, but that's just a safety thing that we do for these kids. And, um, you know, uh, again, equipment-wise, protective equipment-wise, we're, we're as good as anybody. Okay, one last thing. You know, we've heard the term soccer moms. Now you've kind of become a soccer granddad, so talk about that role that you've taken on. You know, I still I think that's maybe the most important role you got, right? I still don't know a whole lot about soccer. Uh, offside still baffles me, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's 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 a lot of fun watching your grandkids play. Absolutely, uh, and, and you know that uh, you're you're going to experience that yep. pretty soon. Uh, but it, it's it's been a lot of fun, and uh, one of them asked me the other day if I watched so and so play soccer, and I said, look. I watch you play soccer. I said, I don't watch anybody else play soccer. <laughs> so uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on. And I, hopefully it wasn't as painful as, as, you, as you think it's going to be. No, it's been worse. <laughs> All right. Thanks for everything you do. And uh, good luck this coming week. Thank you, William. We'll be right back in just a minute. I'm Charles R. Hicks Sr. And I'm Chris Hicks. And we're the Transformers crew. With over 40 years of experience from brakes, AC tune-ups, oil changes, and custom rebuilt transmissions, Transformers is your number one automotive repair source. We have a brand new state-of-the-art facility conveniently located here on Sugar Road, and we also offer financing for those unexpected repair needs. So come and check out the real professionals because we are Transformers. Transformers, Transformers Transmission and Complete All Repair Specialist. 
I'm relatively aware the modern world demands fast. My theories help to explain much about time and speed, but giggling internet speeds go beyond to offer amazing upload and download speeds. Whatever that is. Now everyone at home can download multiple high-definition videos, send and receive emails, and surf the web with no loss of speed. Expand your universe. Data at the speed of light. Squared. Sign up today. Welcome back to the Catamount Football Show. We've got our player interview segment. Guys, welcome to the show and introduce yourself, please. I'm Isaac Lopez. I'm a senior defensive line, number 55. Ethan Evans, junior, number 32, free safety. All right, Isaac, let's start with you. So tell me, first off, about being a senior and, and what's it mean to you this year? It feels great. Like, I remember being with Christian Lama, John Ross, and now it's I'm a senior. So I feel nervous, kind of, yeah. but I'm ready. So talk about your role in the Catamount defense. I'm a defensive line. I'm a defensive end, mostly. Um, I make sure if they double team me, I get down real, really quick so they don't have to be in the linebackers. Yeah, block them. yeah explain that. Cause I know Coach Bennett really works with you guys on that and Coach Marlowe. Uh, if, so if you feel a double team coming, what are you supposed to do? Get my, put, put my knee down, which the most pressure is on, and pull them both down. That way it keeps them off the, yeah. off, off, our, so those guys can run and make the tackle, right? They kind of sacrifice <laughs> yes, you, don't they? <laughs> yes, so you're not the biggest guy, uh, obviously. Defensive, you know, defensive ends, or sometimes you think they're 230, 240 pounds. And so, what do you do when you come up against a big offensive tackle? It's Coach Bennett always reminds me about speed, because I'm just 195. There's tackles. The one I went against is like 270. He was a big guy. It's just speed. So, what kind of technique do you use on him? To get what to, to get it, mm. get around them. Mm. What Coach Bennett taught us is ripping through mm -hmm. on our slants, just yeah. beat them on the, our feet. So you got to be a captain on Friday night, right? Yes, so yeah. tell me about that experience. What did that mean to you? How was that? Felt great. Felt great rocking down the 50-yard line. Represent your team, yes, all your teammates. Yes. Yeah. How about talk a little bit about Ridgeland real quick? The game Friday night that you had out there. Mm. It felt great. I got a fumble recovery, and then I got a couple of tackles. Very, very good. Thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate everything to you. you. Ethan, let's talk to you. So last year, you have kind of a unique story. Your, your family has been Catamount football, your dad, your uncle, your grandfather, coach here, uh, and you came to us last year from Virginia. Talk a little bit about that experience of, of coming into the program. Yes, yeah, sir. So COVID hit, and me and my family, we, I wanted to play football, and I, I knew of this great program, so... I thought, what better than to come down here, live with my grandparents, and play for a great program. So far, the community has just wrapped their arms around me. It's been amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be a good feeling, right, coming in. And, and your dad was here and spoke to the team a couple of weeks ago. How was that? that, that yes, was sir. It, it was fun watching him because a while back when you all played coffee, mm -hmm. uh, he came and talked to the team. And now I was a little boy then. Yep. And now seeing I'm sitting here, and he's talking to me and the whole team. It's, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, he, and he's – your whole family has just done a great job with Catamount football and, and certainly their, their service to the country and everything else they've done. So we certainly appreciate, appreciate him coming in. Tell me about your role in the, in the defense this year. Yes, sir. So I'm free safety and uh, I make sure everyone's positioned. I've been blessed to have some great cornerbacks, another good safety, Bentley. So it's really easy making sure they're lined up. It's really easy. You know, one thing I always like to talk to, you, to defensive backs about, because communication is so important for what y'all do. Yes, sir. But you've got to communicate across the whole field. Offensive line communication is important, but those guys are all mm -hmm. next to each other. You guys are spread across 50 yards. How do you get the, how do you get the message across, and how do you get the communication going? Usually the corner who is closer to the sideline, he's looking at Coach Harris, Coach Carpenter, Coach Thomas, trying to get the signal. He'll echo it across from me to Bentley to the other corner. Now, talk about your responsibility specifically as a free safety. What, what is your job in the defense? Yes, sir. We got different coverages. Usually we like to stick to cover two. Changes up weekly depending on who we're playing against. Right. But, uh, yeah, it's good. And you come up and make some tackles? Yes, sir. <laughs> saw you on the highlights earlier coming in and, and whacking a guy, right? I yes, mean, that sir. Was, that was pretty exciting, wasn't it? You like that? I see you no. smiling. Yes, sir. It was fun. All right. It's awesome. Very good. We appreciate you guys coming on the show. Thanks for everything you do. Look forward to watching the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Stay right here back with more Catamount football after this break.
Buy from the pros who know at Performance Sports Academy. Our pro shop has one of the largest selections of bats, gloves, and cleats in the North Georgia area. Featuring Rawlings, Wilson, Louisville Slugger, DeMarini, Mizuno, and the largest New Balance cleat dealer in the area. We provide baseball and softball gear for travel leagues, rec leagues, middle school, and high school programs. Get your baseball and softball training, equipment, and uniforms from the former collegiate and professional players who know at Performance Sports Academy. ProformanceSportsAcademy.com industrial life safety and commercial security experts fire sprinklers fire extinguishers fire alarm systems clean agent suppression systems backflow devices go catamounts asa the life safety company dad look i found a lost puppy well i'm not lost exactly but hey are you planting that tree wait where are the flags the paint didn't you contact 811 i've dug here before it's fine contacting 811 to have all underground utilities marked is the law and it protects us all here let me borrow your cell phone dogs don't use cell phones humans shouldn't dig before contacting 811 i mean woof. online or on the phone contact 811 at least two business days before any digging project brought to you by georgia 811 can we keep them We're back on Catamount Football, and we continue our player interview segment. Guys, welcome to the show. Introduce yourselves, please. I'm Jair Garcia, number 87, wide receiver, senior. Tyson Greenway, number three, running back, junior. All right, Jair, let's, let's start with you. First off, you got to be a captain Friday night. Talk to me about yes, that. Um, it was pretty exciting, you know, going out there, especially on senior night. There's a lot of energy, and um, yeah, it was nice. Now, you're, you're, you've got siblings that have played and, and one that's currently playing. Talk about your family ties to Catamount football. Um, you know, my, my older brother, first one to come through here, he really enjoyed it. He was really committed. And then... He was know, an offensive lineman. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm the only skilled player. I know. It, you, I was going to say, I was going to ask you, how did that happen? Because Amir, that your brother that's a freshman, is an offensive lineman and you're a wide receiver. So, so what happened there? You know, I just think because uh, we grew up differently or our body types especially, that had a lot to do with it. I thought it. maybe they keep you away from the food. Ooh, I think they stole off my plate. That's <laughs> more little. Uh, tell me about being a, a wide receiver in the Catamount offense. Um, you know, it's pretty fun, especially in practice, just running routes uh, for the majority of it. And we just make sure we uh, take care of the ball, catch it if it comes towards us, and block. I was going to say, that. talk about that blocking part, because when you watch the highlights, you see you guys downfield blocking for, for, for Tyson or Journey. And, and any time there's a long run by a running back, there's receivers downfield blocking, right? Yeah, we just got to make sure that um, that they don't disrupt the play and that uh, they don't take down the running back. Mm -hmm. So how about working with, with uh, Brady at quarterback now? How's that been? Um, he's really developed a lot, especially throughout the summer. Um, I think we're all proud of him, especially how he played against Calhoun, a really tough team, and especially the, the time he was given yeah. and the position he was put in. Talk a little bit about the work you guys did this summer. How many routes do you think you ran well, <laughs> this summer between seven on seven and practice and everything else? Um, it was, it was, it's a lot different than last year. We had yeah. to learn basically almost a whole new playbook, uh, new plays, right. and probably like 15 to 20 new routes. Yeah, you guys have done a great job. Thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate everything you do. All right, Tyson, let's talk to you. So, pretty good night Friday night. Uh, not, a yards, not a lot of yards rushing. It was kind of a strange game, wasn't it? Yes, sir. I mean, the defense helped us out a lot. We didn't get the ball behind the 40, but one time, and it's hard not to score when you have the ball between the 30. So, I yeah. just appreciate what our de defense have done with us and gave us the opportunity that we had. Tell me about your role in the, in the offense this year. I mean... With two running backs that we got, me and Journey split in time, it's, it's real easy to do what we need to do. And like he said, wide receivers blocking, line blocking, everybody's coming together right now. I think one of the things that we've seen out of you this year is some more pass catching too, right? Yes, sir. And, and a I, little pass throwing. <laughs> yes, sir. How about that part? I mean, Coach Long's done a great job with calling plays, giving us a great plays to move the ball. And with the offense we're running right now, it's important for running backs to block, catch, run, and do everything we can to help our team out. So talk to me about your touchdown pass. When he called the play, I was a little scared, didn't really want to do it. But we came out, I saw, looked at the defense, gave it a quick scan, and saw that they didn't have a safety over top of Luke. So I knew he was going to get up and I'd get yeah. him the ball. 
Yeah, you, you, that's that's uh, become a nice weapon for us. Now you're, but you are a really good running back, and and you do a good job. Um, talk about kind of when you get the ball in your hands. What are you looking at? The vision, the things you're looking at as you're approaching the line of scrimmage. I don't really worry about defensive line, to be honest. I, as soon as I touch the ball, I'm looking at linebackers and safeties because I know my wide receiver is going to block the corners. Mm -hmm. And depending on how they shift is just depending on where I go. I see them shift left, and I'm looking right. I see them shift right, and I'm looking left. Uh, I I've, can certainly tell the, the work you put in the weight room has paid off. Do you feel stronger on the field? I mean, I've, you've shucked some runner, I mean, some tacklers and stiff arms some folks. And Yes, sir. Coach Thompson's done a great job yeah. with our weight training pro program, and it's with what he does, it's really easy to do what I need to do. Very good. Thanks, guys, for coming on the show. Appreciate everything you do. Stay right here back with more Catamount football in just a minute. Every community has challenges. But where others see challenges, we see opportunities. Opportunities to harness the pride. And strengths of Whitfield and Murray counties. To fight for the education, basic needs, and health of every person in our local community. We, we are, are the, the hand, hand raisers, raisers, game changers, and the problem solvers. United, we can create a community where everyone is part of something bigger than themselves. Be inclusive. Be bold. Be bold. Be kind. Live united. Thank you. 54 years. How did we get here? It's that we made meaningful relationships and, and helped so many people, people along the way. And that, that is the measure of a man. AFG has a new look and a new downtown location. Still the same great service you've came to expect for the last 50 years. Providing health insurance for employers, individuals, and seniors. Come and roll with us and go Big Red. Coming in on the fire trucks. Always exciting, right? For it is exciting. You know, with the, uh, with the crowd that we had there and then the sirens blasting, it was really, really a special experience. And you got, had a beautiful night and here we go with senior night. That is, the senior night's a big night for these kids. They've had a lot of opportunity, um, you know, over the years, but, but now to kind of get recognized is really nice. Got the captains coming out for the coin toss. We deferred and chose to, ended up kicking off. Who does, and JJ did a great job of kicking off the other night. You know, it's hard for them to travel 80 yards. It's a great play with the, by, uh, by our kids. You know, they came out hungry and ready to go. Uh, we started, uh, I think, all the seniors we had on defense. Um, so it was a special to see them to do that. You know, there's Ethan Evans there, uh, followed up by Daniel Ramos. Started out in a four-man front, too, which we haven't seen in a while, right? We did. We, you know, when we go to the wing tee, it's, it's a little bit easier to defend. We don't have yep. to spread out quite as much. Bring back the good old days. Lots of four-man <laughs> front days. That's right, you know, it's not quite as boring. <laughs> now, this is great right here. And now Coach Long said that this should count as a block punt where he kicks the ball and he kicks the guy right in the fanny, right? You know, so, okay. So, offense starts out great field position, come out and run power, and there's Tyson, uh, a couple of great moves, and, and takes it into the end zone. Yes. Longest run of the night. See a good replay here. Grant Halverson pulling around, making a nice block on the on the linebacker, pulling around. Got the receivers blocking downfield. That's always the key when you have a big run, is those receivers are down there blocking somebody. Yeah, absolutely, and our receivers do a good job. Coach Martinez does a great job with those guys working blocks every week. Extra points, up and good. You know, I think this was supposed to be a bubble that the, the uh, they lost their starting quarterback I kind of right before the game. And, Food poisoning uh, or something I, like I that, I think right? that's what they yeah. said, and so the guy was, you know, a little bit rusty and, um, Turn the wrong way. <laughs> That'll do it. 
There's good. Uh, Adriel does a great job of sitting right in there. And, and again, Ethan Evans coming in and making a big tackle. Uh, uh, really on waiting on the guy to pull it out. Uh, he did a great job for us. He's a sophomore uh, that's getting a little bit of playing time. Here's a good replay of it. See all those red shirts around the football. Here's another punch. You know, anytime seven gets the ball, it, it, it's, it's, it's scary. You know, he's got some moves. He's got one right here that's really pretty, yeah. You know, it makes it tough, tough to special. defend. It is very special. So it gets the ball down about the 15 or 16 yard line. Couldn't ask for much better field position. No, not at all. A little naked right here to Tyson, and there he is, good stiff arm and picking up eight or nine yards right there. Now it's another great catch. Just shows the athletic ability of Kareem. Does a great job right there, <laughs> going up and getting it. What a great catch! Just his presence of knowing where he is on the field and where the ball is. I mean, look, there's no panic. There's no. He just up, oh, got it. Oh yeah, you know that's what makes him a great corner. <laughs> yeah, another extra point here by JJ. So, five minutes in. Or five minutes left in the first quarter. Another touchback. That was almost out of the end zone. Such uh, an advantage. It is. This is one of the few times that they really pass the ball, but we've got a couple of kids in there that are uh, doing what they've been coached to do. Right there is uh, Phelan Bannon. You know, he, he's done a great job. He pulls double duty offensively and defensively. Uh, you know, he goes in there. It's great to, to get involved in that sack right there. Absolutely. Here we go. It, Outside zone. And there goes Journey. You know, he just kind of looks like he's just moving slowly, just and all of a sudden gliding. he just runs right past everybody. Yep. And nobody has a chance to get him. Just kind of gliding. Oh yeah, you know, and he can run for speed, but he can show it right here. He runs for a little bit of power, mm -hmm. uh, so he's got it in him. Here we go again, going the other direction with it. Oh yes, nice job, nice job by the good push. And there's 52 Peyton Starlings in the game now. That's a freshman offensive tackle playing. Yeah, we're playing a lot of young kids that are doing a great job. Another great catch by Kareem, kind of fighting to get what he can get. You know, I, I love to see us to be able to go into this right here and kind of run the football in. Uh, Power down on the goal line. Yeah. Great play. Good blocking. And nice job by Tyson of taking it up in the A-gap, uh, cutting it back right there. The guys did a uh, striker woods, and, and John Ridley did a nice job of sealing off, and he just slipped in right behind him. Yes. That ends the first quarter. Yep. And here's the soccer team getting recognized. They did. What a tremendous program that uh, Coach Sheaves has got put together down there. They do such a great job. Showing off their rings. Now there's a big bus right there. You know, we got a bunch of guys. It's going to take all of us to tackle somebody <laughs> that big. And, you know, we got there. Uh-oh. That's one of the seven turnovers on the night. So... I think we're at about the nine-yard line here. Pretty good. Couldn't ask for, for better starting field position than we had the entire first half of this game. Yeah, absolutely. We got a little twist going in there. There's a, a, a new guy there. We call that guy Elvis. And there's a, a Isaac Lopez right there coming up with it. He's going to be a, a, was a guest earlier on the show. I like the celebration. Well, Brandon didn't knock anybody over. <laughs> Good protection by the offensive line. Good throw and catch right there. Yeah, this was this was you know my favorite probably favorite play of the game. That Journey really puts a move on the corner and turns them all, or the safety and turns them all the way around. Watch him catch the ball with his hands. It sounds silly to say, but you see so many high school receivers that don't. They catch it with their body. He's got his hands out and catches that ball right in front of him. He's done it. He's worked really really hard to become a pass catcher. You he know, really he's really just exactly a runner. right because he's he struggled with that in the past and he's so good at it now. Oh yeah. Some college, they need to pick him up. He'll he'd be a good asset. Without a doubt. JJ again kicking off. And I want to think this might be the one he put the backspin on. It is. That's one that we've been working on, on the grass. Uh, you know, we was going to hit it short and uh, try to get down there and get it, but we, we weren't quite fast enough. This is another good one. You know what? You, you, you talk, with, uh, talk to him about scooping and scoring. <laughs> And uh, but you know, linemen have no field awareness. No, they, they don't. Have no idea where they are. Fat guys, they like we we just oh score a touchdown. Yes, yeah, so that was a great hit by Parker Icos. You know, he really had a heck of a night. He was forced two fumbles and got one of his own. 
Yeah. Austin Fisher gets that one. Yeah, and then he realizes he could have scored. <laughs> This Brady good. just pulls this thing and, and uh, Waltz is in the end zone with it. Yeah, that's good. Anytime we can score that easily, it's, it's just a sigh of relief. Yeah, he pulled one later in the game that he should have given to Tyson. That, that's the <laughs> danger that's the challenge sometimes. <laughs> yes. Another extra point, up and good. Seven for seven on extra points, so that's, that's always a positive. So now you want to turn around and kick this one on into the end zone. There's another one of our turnovers, I believe. Yep. Anderson Jackson also plays a little bit of offense, uh, getting in there and getting this ball. Does quite a bit of double duty at tight end and H-back and defensive end. Here's another look at it. Yeah, it's good to see those guys doing their job and people around. Uh, you know, that's when you wind up getting a fumble is when you got people around the ball. And you can see why we only had 140 something yards of offense in the first half. We're starting at the at the uh, 19 this time, I think, or wherever that is, 16, 19 yard line. It is, and there's good. You know that that right there to me shows really what the weight room's done to us, where it's it's really difficult for one guy to bring us down. Yeah. It's a great catch for Blanchard out here. I really went up and got it. He did. I I was standing on the sidelines and saw him jump up. I thought, golly, I said, was that number one catching that thing? He got off the ground. Yeah. And then I like how he protects the ball. Yeah. They got two or three white shirts on him, but he is. There's the student section. Yeah, they had a great part of the uh, part of the game. They you sure know. did. When they get involved, it really excites everybody. They really do a good job of helping the officials, too. <laughs> yes. There's a journey again around the edge. Good job by those guys. Good blocking up front. He just outruns that guy. And that one. And that one. <laughs> There's not too many he won't be able to outrun, that's for sure. That's Pepe. Pepe's in there kicking extra points, so it's good to see him back and uh, kicking. This is another one of the fumbles here that uh, Icos picks it up, takes off running. Yeah, we got a little penalty right yeah. there, but hey, you know. At least we've got the ball. Yeah, right. that's, a, that's a tough one to call right there. He kind of got kind of turned his back on him. But it's good everybody's where they're supposed to be, and so we're able to, to kind of gang tackle and that gets the extra guy ready to take the ball from him. So here we go. Run. Yeah, that's Tyson's. He, you know, headed up inside and saw a break outside and took it and wound up wound up scoring there. Running power again, and he just kind of dips it out. And good job by Kramer not hitting that guy in the back. That's right. He's got a lot of a lot of field awareness, mm -hmm. like you said. But they uh, they've done a great job. So that kind of wraps up the first half. <clears throat> See them right here with their last possession. Yep. A lot of gang tackles, a lot of big bodies in. So that brings the end of the first half and go in and have some Gatorade and water and get ready for the second half. Direct Packaging is your complete one-stop packaging supplier of choice. In addition to being the largest in-stock packaging and adhesive supplier in North Georgia, Direct Packaging also manufactures boxes while adhering to the same service standards our customers have come to expect. With over 170,000 square feet of packaging and specialty films, boxes, and adhesives, we are the leader for packaging supplies. Direct Packaging is committed to our customers. We have a dedicated fleet ready to serve you. We pride ourselves in being able to deliver upon receipt in a 60-mile radius within a four-hour window. Our friendly staff is very knowledgeable and willing to help in any way that we can. With years of experience in the packaging industry, we can find the right product that suits your packaging needs. Direct Packaging also believes in supporting our community. We proudly serve by giving back to local organizations that make the Dalton area such a great place to live. Proud of the work we do. Dedicated to the customers we serve. Direct Packaging. 
your largest single source packaging distributor manufacturer in North Georgia. Contact us today. Home is a place where all are welcome. It's where the story begins. It's not a place, it's a feeling. Home is where the heart is. At Furniture of Dalton, we handpick each of our 150 brands so that you can find your perfect heart's desire. Come see what you've been missing at Carpets of Dalton and Furniture of Dalton, the destination that brings you home. Exit 328 off I-75. If you are selling or buying real estate, we are here to help. Colwell Banker Kennard Realty has been guiding the Dalton community home since 1974. Please contact the number one real estate company in Northwest Georgia for all your real estate needs. Board of Dalton would like to recognize our past and present Dalton Public School teachers. 2018, Ms. Risley Lee Dean. 2019, Mr. Freddie Fuentes. 2020, Ms. Ris Teresa Hensley. And 2021 winner, Ms. Ris Jennifer Sumner. Board of Dalton, your hometown Ford dealership. Go, Catamounts! A beautiful smiles by design, we are proud of our small town heritage. Located in Dalton and Calhoun, Georgia, we serve our community with pride. We have extended hours, including early and late appointments, Plus, we are open Saturdays for your convenience. To see more of our amazing transformations, please visit us on www.beautifulsmilesdentistry.com or visit our Instagram page. For all your family and cosmetic dental needs, come to Beautiful Smiles by Design. Back for the second half highlights, and, and like the game Friday night, I think this is going to be pretty quick. But <laughs> great thing is we got a chance to uh, – everybody got to play in the second half. This is a Tom Jones Educator of the Year. It's just what an honor to receive that award. It goes to a lot of uh, great educators over the year. That's Big run. I, that was Toss's last run. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're able to get some younger kids in, but that's a great run right there. He hits the hole where it's supposed to be, and he's able to gain some big yardage. And that was the end of his duty for the night. Yeah, we started getting in. There's uh, uh, Kenny. Yeah. He's done, uh, you know, he's really a free safety, and he doesn't look like he's fast, but I think he's running for his life. <laughs> uh, but he does such a great job of running. That's uh, right. Getting down the field. Good block right there by Bannon Phelan, too. You were talking about him earlier, 89, playing defense, and he played a lot for us on offense. Oh, yeah. Too. He does a good job. Another great run by Kenny. Here he goes. And there's 52, Peyton Starling. There's a lot of our younger kids right there. There's uh, Austin Davis with the pressure right there. And such a long body. He does a great job of blitzing. You know, I really thought that uh, uh, the fat daddy had that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's been robbed of his interception. That's right. That's right. They should have given him that. Yes. Maybe you can see it again. Upon further review, that's clearly, <laughs> clearly an interception. No, no question. This is a great little fourth down play right here. Uh, Austin Davis coming off the edge and the linebackers and defensive line doing their job. We're able to stop them short there on fourth and one. It's a great stop. See it again here. Good job. Offense, you know, coming out in this situation, you want to get, ideally, get at least two first downs. So when you, if you do have to punt, you can flip the field. But we weren't able to do that. No, we weren't, and uh, J.J. there to get it off. Had a little too much pressure of what we wanted, but, uh, you know, it kind of forces the guy to kick. Now they got a little bit of room, and uh, we got another opportunity to stop them. So we're going into the fourth quarter now. There's Kenny again coming as a free safety, you know, and he'll, he'll get better over the years, but you can see a lot of young kids in there uh, fighting to get the ball, and that was another one of our turnovers. Yeah. Bubba, hmm. scrapping in there. Came up with a loose football. Man. We've got a whole bunch of young guys in on, on offensive line now. All freshmen and sophomores in there playing. And, and, and I think Kevin Murillo, who's a junior, was playing some too. Yeah, it's a great job right here by uh, 
a bow stout of really knocking that ball loose and, and us just pursuing the ball and getting down in line and getting it. Here comes good blocking. Sagan running hard. Yeah, he does. You know, and I wish to say that surprised me. He runs like that in practice. Uh, you know, and he does a great job for us there, and it, it translates perfectly onto the field. Looks at the push right there with Cesar and Austin Davis doubling that. They double that defensive end back to the safety. It's a good job by those guys. Good push. Eric Garcia in there. This is a big fourth down right here. It's the opportunity for us to kind of keep control of the ball to run the clock out. And, and Sagan does a great job, a perfect block in the hole was huge. And he just ran as hard as he could and did a great job of picking up that first down. Lining up, shaking hands after the game. We got together for uh, both teams for a prayer. That's always, that's always nice, I like to see that. It is good. You know, when those guys get out there, they go at each other pretty hard. And you know, at the end of the day, we're all still kids and we're all still coaches. And so we do a, Try to do everything we can to make sure the kids understand that. Absolutely. We're super fired up down here at Cherokee Brewing, getting ready for another football season. Don't forget to come down and check out one of our 24 beers on tap. We got the brew keg going on. Also want to remind you that we do have a drive through set up behind the Oakwood Cafe so you can get your favorite chicken tenders without getting out of the car. Keep an eye out for a concert out at Walnut Hill Farm on the weekends this fall. And also be prepared for our Georgia grown produce boxes with Gathered Goods. We appreciate all your support and go teams this year. I hope everybody makes it to the playoffs. Hi, I'm Charles R. Hicks Sr. And I'm Chris Hicks. And we're the Transformers crew. With over 40 years of experience from brakes, AC tune-ups, oil changes, and custom rebuilt transmissions, Transformers is your number one automotive repair source. We have a brand new state-of-the-art facility conveniently located here on Sugar Road, and we also offer financing for those unexpected repair needs. So come and check out the real professionals, because we are Transformers. Transformers, Transformers Transmission and Complete All Repair Specialist. Kaler Industrial Sales after hour service. This is Raymond. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, sure can. Uh, we can meet you in about 15 minutes. Does that work? Hey, Heath, you got to go to work. I'm go. Good hit, Aiden. Good hit. Papa, why are you and Dad always running off to work like that? Well, at Kaler Industrial, we always tell our customers we don't expect their business, we earn their business. I'm relatively aware the modern world demands fast. My theories help to explain much about time and speed, but GigLink internet speeds go beyond to offer amazing upload and download speeds. Whatever that is. Now everyone at home can download multiple high-definition videos, send and receive emails, and surf the web with no loss of speed. Expand your universe. Data at the speed of light. Squared. Sign up today. All right, Coach, let's talk a little bit about this week's opponent, the North Forsyth Raiders. Number one, why don't you talk about how we got the game? Because last year we only had, we only had nine regular season games and we were able to pick up these guys. We did. Right around, uh, you know, in January, February, we started looking for a game. Coach Martinez has uh, a relationship with one of the coaches, and we reached out. They had something available, and we had something available, and so we were able to get this game worked in. And so it really – it's kind of an advantage to both of us. I think they pick up a home game, but we've agreed to split the gate. So we, instead of having just five home games, we'll have five and a half. And I think for us it's a great build-up going into the region schedule, right? It is. It's exactly what we need. We come off with a tough game with uh, Calhoun, uh, and then we come out and we play well against Ridgeland. And this is going to be a really, really tough team. They're big. They're physical. Talk about their offense a little bit, what you've seen from you know, them, how they look on offense. They're very, very similar to, to Calhoun, except their line is this huge. And so they run the ball well. Quarterback's got a great arm. They've got great receivers. Uh, they give us some multiple different formations to do a lot of shifting to try to get you off balance. Uh, but at the end of the day, the, the formations you will see are very similar to Calhoun. Throw the ball quite a bit? They do. They throw probably about 40, 45% of the time they throw the ball. And they had a pretty good game Friday night against an opponent that we're pretty familiar with, with Harrison. Harrison. 
Uh, they ended up losing 16 to six, but it was a heck of a. It, it was, a, was heck a heck of a ball game. You know, sitting there watching it, they had a big lightning delay, and I'm sure that played into it at some point. But you know, anytime you can go down and beat Harrison down there, you know, as physical as they are, or sorry, anytime you play them, Harrison's yeah. very physical. Uh, you know, and even to, to stay close, it, it's good for them. And we saw Harrison's move back to their wing P route, so that's a, that's a very physical <laughs> offense. You know? Yeah, they did. And, you know, and defensively, Harrison uh, blitzes all over the yeah. place, and so you'll be able to see a lot of stuff. North for Scythe, uh, their defense is extremely multiple. We've seen them. We saw them in 3-3, three, 3-4, three, three, four, 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 five, one I mean, you talk about it, any front you can get, they do it, and they blitz from everywhere. They have a really, really good scheme. Um, not huge, as maybe as big as they are on the offensive line, but but really a lot of uh, good, fast linebackers and, and some physical defensive ends. I think it's going to be a really good test uh, for, for our offense and for our offensive line to battle these guys. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, this is the kind of game we need leading into a week off. You know, we need a physical game. We'll have time to heal uh, because once we start this region schedule, it's going to be brutal. Talk a little bit about the off-week philosophy, what, what you're thinking uh, for the team after we get through with North or South game Friday night, then we got a week off, and then we're then we're head headlong into the region schedule. We are, and we'll take a couple of days off during the off week. You know, these kids have been going at it since June, and so it's time for us to get a little bit of break uh, to kind of get our batteries charged up. Even us as coaches need to. That's right. Yeah, so. yeah. You don't understand. I don't think you realize how much. You know, when you're going day after day after day, it is nice to get a little bit of a physical, but also a mental break, right? Yeah, for the that's kids seven days a week for coaches. us. Yeah. yeah. How about uh, North Forsyth kicking game? Uh, you know, they, they've struggled a little bit on some of their field goals and extra points, but, uh, you know, they've got a good punter. They've got a good returner. Uh, I want to think in the Alcove game, they, they return one for a touchdown. And so they've got great skill guys. And so we just hope J.J. continues to kick it off into the uh, end zone. And they're 7A. Uh, so that, that's another good, another good test for us. And, and we were talking earlier. I said, I don't, I don't think we've played these guys before in the past any time. Do you I don't know. I don't know that we have. Um, you know, it'll be our first really long road test. You know, it's about two and a half hour ride. Uh, they just got new turf put in, so that, that'll be uh, enjoyable. You know, now that we've been practicing on grass, it's time, right. you know, you get spoiled. Talk a little bit about the kids' schedule on Friday. What, so it's a two-and-a-half-hour bus ride. What do you do? What do we do as far as school and pregame meal and all the, all the regular things that happen? Uh, so we'll have to move our schedule uh, up about 40 or 50 minutes, and so we'll wind up eating dinner at about, you know, 2 o'clock and so that we're able to pull out about 3, 3.30. We want to try to get to – any away game about 5.30, so we've got plenty of time to do what we need to get done. And then one of the best things to ride home is the chicken box, right? That's exactly right. The quarterback, time, the quarterback club provides. That's, that's the only fantastic. time I eat KFC, and it's delicious every time. <laughs> it's always good, it right? It is it's good. Always good. All right, we'll stay right here back in just a minute. Fifty-four years. How did we get here? It's that we made meaningful relationships and, and help, help so, so many people, people along the way. And that, that is the measure of a man. If you are selling or buying real estate, we are here to help. Coel Banker Kennard Realty has been guiding the Dalton community home since 1974. Please contact the number one real estate company in Northwest Georgia for all your real estate needs. Hey folks, Jason Denson, Ford of Dalton, North Georgia's fastest growing dealership and home of the Power Buy. Our new Ford vehicles come with Ford of Dalton's exclusive 10-year, 150,000 mile powertrain warranty at no cost to you. FordofDalton.com. Hope to see you soon. All right, Coach, let's kind of wrap up the show. Talk a little bit about what's going on with some of the younger teams. There's not a whole lot of activity last week with JV, and but but the Little Cats had a big day on Saturday, right? It is. Uh, uh, yeah, Hammond Creek went down uh, to Rome. Uh, our eighth grade was canceled due to COVID. Seventh grade was canceled due to COVID on their end. Uh, but our sixth grade got to play, uh, and it was kind of the first real test that they got to go against Rome and the really a quality opponent. And so they did extremely well. It was nothing to nothing at half, just like we like it. Yeah, but uh, we wound up winning that thing 12 to 6, and we wound up rushing the ball quite a bit and uh, uh, having uh, – Coach Cole Bennett's son uh, catching a game winner, just Fantastic. like he did against That's Tennessee. Right. You know, runs right. in the family. <laughs> Why don't you talk a little bit about the uh, the league that they're going to be playing in? I think it's kind of interesting. People may not be aware of of what those guys are doing this year. It is. It's the GMSAA. Is it, it's for our sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And what that does is allows us to play a, really a lot of teams that were in our old region. You know, where we didn't have a lot of games when we were up here. We might have been four or five games, and so. We've got 10 games on the schedule, and they get the opportunity to compete for a state championship. And so 
one thing about it, it's kind of interesting. These are most of these teams are not school run teams like our our right. They're they're run by the booster club and and they pull multiple middle schools together to form those teams. They do, and so a lot of a lot of parents do it and take involved. A lot of uh, uh, of the community schools they're able to pull from, but the the um, the rules are very very similar to what we experience in in. in uh, in the middle school where they've you know, got to be enrolled. And so they go and they check that stuff. And so it's about as good as a league that you can get in without mm -hmm. being in a, just a true middle right, school right. region. And so uh, yeah, it, I think it prepares those guys uh, for what they're going to see as they get on up into high school when playing against that kind of competition. Absolutely. You know, with these kids, George had them in the little cast and they've done about all they could do in Chattanooga. And so now we're playing, I think we're at Creek View Saturday. We play at 10-12-2 uh, again if, if all the games are on. And uh, so it should be another great matchup mm -hmm. for us. I want to invite everybody down to North Forsyth, which is down in the coming area, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, like you said, two and a half hour trip. They can stop at the new Bucky's, or hear, they can yeah. stop at Williamson Brothers and get them some barbecue or some brisket at Bucky's, right? Absolutely. And, you know, I hear the brisket sandwich is That's very right. good. So. Uh, quarterback club, as always, providing great support for the road trips. They're going to have the big charter buses for the kids. Talk about what that means <laughs> as when they're going to the game. Absolutely. You know, we, we, we took a, uh, our regular buses to uh, Pepperell, and, and it's a long, long. Cheese wagons. Yeah, it's long <laughs> and hot, you know. And, but for us to be able to play such long away games, you got to have something that, that, that you can really travel in and spread out, uh, you know, the, we're a big team, and so we got to have room. It makes all the difference for them, right? I mean, it does. Not, it, nice, comfortable seats for the guys, and uh, the, ter the trip down and the return trip is, is Especially much the return trip back. You know, that's where the kids really need to stretch out because they're sore. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of times the facilities we go to are not adequate enough <laughs> to really dress in, and so we can take advantage of the room and the buses and able to dress yeah. in there as well. Absolutely. We'll wrap up the show like we always do. So we'll be back next week, same cat time, same cat channel.